Hey, change agents, and welcome to another episode of Impact Monday with me, Tracy V. Allen. So today we're going to be talking about the five steps. Uh, let me make sure I have the title right. The five steps to social to successful change. So I'm sure, if not. I hope that you have heard about the theory of change and that's where these five steps kind of evolve from the five steps of the from the theory of change because change is a complex situation a lot of people don't like to change they don't like to adapt to new situations but adapting to new situations and being open to change is the only way we can grow as a people and to grow as a society. So we're gonna talk about some of those um, dynamics that go along with successful change in your organization, in your business, so that it is not as taxing as it usually is to most people. My name is Tracy V. Allen. If this is your first time here, my name is Tracy V. Allen. I'm the owner of TVA Consulting Group, where we help change agents to design, build, and fund their social ventures, maximize their revenue, and create impact in their communities. Please make sure to like, to share, and subscribe to the channel, turn on your notification bells so that you know when I am here so you don't miss any of the videos. And make sure you go on over to our website. It's tvacon.com. Again, that's tvacon.com. And I am going to put the banner up so that you can see, right? Um, okay, so let's get into it. We have five steps that we're gonna get into today and hopefully it brings some clarity and you're able to effectively implement some change strategies within your organization to strengthen it, to make you more profitable and to actually make more impact in your community. If you're a social enterprise, a social entrepreneur or a nonprofit organization, that these strategies for successful change help you to make some essential changes in your organization and all of us as business owners or at any given point in time have things that we need to change and this is one strategy to do so so number one <clears throat> is understanding or embracing the fact that change is complex okay change is not easy it is a complex it's like an onion it has layers right <laughs> um because like i stated earlier people really don't like to change we're set in our ways we want to do things a certain way and that's it and then here you come talking about oh this is not working and i'm going to need you to do x y and z and the first thing that your employees are thinking in their heads is oh my god more work right I, she wants me to do more work like i already don't have enough I already don't have the support that I need. And now she wants to put more work or he wants to put more work on top of what I already have. Bam, the, the barriers go up and they already blocked you out. They're angry. They're upset because you're asking them to step outside of their comfort zone and do something else that they don't want to do. Right. So like I said, change is complex and you have to approach it tactfully in order for people to embrace it and adapt to it and actually implement the changes necessary and feel like, okay, this was the best route for us to go. My life is actually easier. So you don't want to come in like a dictator when it comes to change. You want to come in and come in with a different approach to telling them, hey, things need to change. So you come in from what the outcomes are going to be, and then you come to what the change needs to be based on the outcomes, because we sell them the outcomes, right? So the rosy picture of what could happen if change occurs, and then tell them what is necessary to get that desired outcome, you would probably have a lot more success when it comes to telling your, um, your employees or your volunteers or whoever that change needs to occur. Okay, the second thing is building trust, right? So um, in order for you to have successful change in your organization and anything that you do, you have to build trust with the audience that you are trying to get to change. They have to 
pushy, no like, and trust you. We have to build that trust factor. They have to know that you're a person of your word. They have to know that you're going to be there with them every step of the way. And if they do get frustrated, annoyed, or any of those things that they can come to you and talk to you, and you're going to be there to help them through the process. You or someone else who you've assigned to that job is going to be there to help them through the process without judgment. Change is hard. We are creatures of, of habits. And when you ask us to change, it is very advantageous. You have to have patience. You have to build up that trust. And the change should not be one big thing at one time. You want to take it in stages. So you want to implement small things along the way. That's how you build up the trust, right? Small little things along the way that you show that you're there for the support and the caring and all of that stuff. So that when you hit the big, when you put and try to implement a huge, a bigger change that they are already palatable to what it is that you're going to do. They know that they're going to get the support necessary from you and your team in order to implement implement this change effectively. I think one of the biggest things that happens when change is trying to be implemented is that it's done so haphazardly, even though the desired outcomes are supposed to be good and could be great, because of the implementation strategies that are used by most corporations and most um, CEOs or bosses of companies or you know anything that you're working for, that it really just derails um, the buy-in to that change because the implementation of the change, the, 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 the steps towards actually getting to implementing the change were not done effectively. It was kind of dropped on people and no one likes it. That's how you lose people. That's how you get disgruntled employees. So you really want to be tactful and take time to implement changes within your organization. Number three is to create, converge, and coordinate. So you create, what is this change that we want to have? What is the, like I talked about, what are the expected outcomes of this change? How is it going to change our clients' um, engagement on a positive level? And how is it going to make the employees more efficient or bring more revenue into the organization to bring more revenue into the company. And that is what you want to talk about when you talk thinking about creating what does this change? What, there has to be a reason for the change, right? So what is this change actually going to do in the long run? Then you want to converge. When you talk about converging, that means you want to get the key people together and sit down and talk about it, like your department heads. How best is it for them to implement this change in their specific department? You want to get that feedback. Again, that is important. You're building that trust. You're making it um, more palatable for people to accept the change and actually implement and execute the change within their specific task more efficiently. And then you, of course, want to coordinate. So you want to coordinate and how changes are better. When you're dealing with change and want to implement change, it's best to do it in stages. So you want to coordinate. How are you going to roll out this change project, right? In what stage? What are the stages and how long does each stage of this a new implementation happen? So that is what you want to do. You want to create, you want to converge, and you want to coordinate. Number four, um, you want to engage stakeholders. Like I said, make sure that the key people, if you have investors, they understand what you're doing in the company and why it needs to be done. Not just your people who you are, you have as department heads, but if you do have a board of directors, if you're a nonprofit, if you have um, uh, an advisory board as a social enterprise, or you have investors in your company, you want to make sure that you talk to them, even though your the change is going to happen within the company and the departments, the people who have an vested interest in your company or your organization or needs also need to be a part of the conversation. They need to understand what changes are going to be made and why these changes are going to be made and what is the expected outcome of these changes. And you need to explain to them what the phases are going to be of these for these changes because it does directly affect them, whether it's financially or otherwise. So make sure you're talking to the people. Communication is a big component of effective or successful change, change in any company, any organization. 
Number five is um, shift systems with human capital, right? So you want to shift the systems and processes in your company with human capital. Those, those are the people that work for you, like I said. So you want to get them involved in whatever the change is going to be and how that change is going to be best implemented. Let's say you're a supervisor of a, or you're the CEO of a company and you feel like your sales department isn't working as efficiently as it should be but you are not a salesperson. That's why you hired a sales manager or a sales supervisor. And then that person supervises the other people in your sales department, right? Who best to talk to about, you know that it needs to be changed and you have ideas of what should change in order for um, your sales department to produce best. But isn't it best for you to then talk to the sales manager and get his or her ideas on what you are thinking about because that's the person who is most connected to actually doing the work that is necessary in that department. They manage everyone in that department. And once you've spoken to that person, then that person who is the supervisor of the sales department will go talk to their the people who work on with them in their department and talk through that process and come up with more ideas. And then you all come to the table. But that human capital buy-in and that human capital um process of making sure that that change is effective is very essential. Like I have a friend who works for a particular company. She's worked for the company for like 25 years. A new supervisor came in over the company and hired a new CEO. He decided that her department was irrelevant and that that work could be done by a computer, hired a com computer systems um, a, a, a technology company to create a new program. The program came in, they spent hundreds of thousands. I think they've spent some like $500,000 on the program just to realize that the program cannot do what the people in the department was doing. It's just impossible. There are too many nuances for a computer to sift through that the human capital could do. So they already told everybody in the department that they were going to be let go. And then turns around my, and asks my friend, who is the supervisor of that department, can she stay to keep operating the computer system? And she declined because they were never a part of the conversation to begin with. So make sure that you're developing, you're building that trust and developing those relationships and bringing people who are going to be affected, directly affected by the change into the conversation. So let's recap again to make sure that we understand what the five steps to successful changes are to successful change is. So it is embracing complexity because change is like onion, right? It's like an onion it has layers and these layers need to be peeled back and understood in order for you to have effective change. You need to build trust between the people who are going to be affected by the change. You need to create, converge, and coordinate with key people. You need to make sure you're engaging with your stakeholders and that they understand what is going on um, and why it is happening and what the expected outcomes are going to be. And you need to make sure that your human capital is a part of the systems and processes for this change, that they too understand why they're, why this change needs to be made and how it's going to make their job easier and make the customer engagement more um, efficient and make give a better customer experience. So those are the five steps for successful change. Again, make sure you like, you share, you subscribe. Remember, there's someone in your community who is relying on the products and services that you offer, and it's up to you to make sure that you get it right. Please go check out my website. Contact us if you need our um if you need our services and check out some of our playlists. We have a lot of very, very good information on this channel, whether it's through Mission Impact, um, the series called Mission Impact or um, Impact Monday, or just some of the general stuff on business planning and strategic planning, government contracting, and so on and so forth. Until next time, everyone. Bye-bye.